at the beginning, we talked about developing roots, right? Remaining in Jesus. Can somebody read number two? What is the O? Second, second O right there. There's another screen right here. <laughs> I think some of you just quit there. Okay. Observe. Observe the word of God. Number three. So we're obeying God's will. Number four. And number five. Number five. So, um, yeah, what, what we want to make sure is that we, we are reminded. Last week, I left you a little, a little homework. Do you remember that? Right? So the homework is to take time and pray and fast this week. Right? It's, take, it's taking those baby steps and say, hey, how can I start just making space for God to show up? How can I make space for that? And taking heart inventory was one that I stopped this week. And I was like, hey, what are some of the things that are wins for me? And some of the things I don't feel I'm winning. I'll be honest. And I did this little list, put it next to one another, and just started really counting my blessings because we're very quick of being very, very judgmental with ourselves. When we look ourselves in that mirror, we, we, we're our worst critic. You know, we, 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 other people can say whatever, but many times it's us, right? So how do we take our inventory and then how do we meditate in the word of God? So I gave you Psalms 103. And, and if you're part of our chats and if you're part of that, um, you don't need to be on WhatsApp if you don't want to. So I want to make sure that you also know that you could just sign up to the updates. And every week I was giving you chunks of, of Psalms 103. Anybody got it? Right. So the idea is for you to take time and meditate in the word of God. And in our prayer night, we went again and we meditated in Psalms 103. Because it's not for you to have to, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to read the whole Bible. Read one verse. That's enough. So let's go because today I want to make sure that we go into what God wants to speak to us. Last week, we were sharing about um, the idea, we could keep going, the Idea of knowing that this is what, what, as a church, is our vision statement, it's our mission statement, and we are parking a loving God for this month. Understanding that we, if we're a church that loves God first, loving people will come a little easier. Because loving people with your own love, ain't, it ain't going to really go very far. <laughs> because I don't have love to really give you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the problem. I'm trying to love you with my love. You know what? My love to you. It's, <laughs> it's very, very conditional. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to get something from you. And if I'm not happy with you, guess what? I'm not really loving you much. But when Jesus comes and gives us his love, what he tells us is you got to love. You know who you got to love? Your enemies. My enemies, guess what? I thought they didn't have any enemies. I grew up in church. I was a church boy. I felt good. I was like, no, I don't have no enemies. Guess what? You got them. Because the moment you make a statement and you stand on something, somebody's not going to like you for that. I started seeing people literally yelling at us when we started serving our community because we were cleaning up the neighborhood. We got people yelling at us. You know why? Because they couldn't open up a liquor store 200 feet from the church. And they saw us in the streets and they remembered that we were those people that didn't let them open up that liquor store. We didn't do anything. The law is there. You feel me? You just got to be alive to have enemies. You just got to be alive, forget about it. Just by you being here, there's going to be people already hating on you. The question is, are you going to love on them? Well, you got to love God first. Because God will give you that love even for your enemies, for people that you don't love. And then that love for people moves you to justice, moves you to see, man, what are the broken systems that God wants to renew? And we're really going to spend time on that on the third month. So let's, let's, let's really look for this, right? As we seek God, he gives me that love for people, love for justice. Well, as I look for God's kingdom, the shalom and the righteousness of God is what I want to see as the fruit of it. So I love God, but the fruit of it, how do I know I'm loving God? Man, I got to start loving people, though. It has, to, it has to come out. It has to come out because it's his love. So let's go to it because last week we were talking about the Shema. And, and um, let's go to Mark when Jesus was asked and confronted. In Mark 12, 30, he said to the people that were questioning him about what is the most important law, he said this. Can we read it together? One, two, three. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Last week, I parked on heart and soul, and these two things are very connected. Today, I want us to go with loving God with all our mind and loving God with all our strength. So can we go to understand 
you could go, um, just keep going. Let's understand, it's okay, we're going to skip that. That's Deuteronomy 6, 4, 7. You're going to see the, our might against solar might. And then um, let's go to the first idea here. With all our minds, let's, let's love God with all our minds. I want you to be reminded that your mind will be the biggest battleground that you will always be fighting in. You fought some stuff just to be here today. I fought a lot of things. I don't know, today, my bed really felt very cozy. More than last week. Is, is it an age thing? Can, is it a, I don't know. Like, it just felt comfortable today. <laughs> You know, it's probably because we're doing stuff at home. Like, you know, we had some snow days. How many praise God for that? Not me. Not me. Because wives have like a, an idea and a project. And I'm like, it's a snow day. We all get off. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point of the snow day? No. I don't go to school anymore. Now we're like, hey, you know that project? Can we finish this? I'm like, come on. No, no, no. Don't say amen. Don't say amen. We, we're the women in the house, don't say This is not. No. So I felt like, Dad, I'm tired. My body reminds me, like, I'm tired, like, because I've been like up and down, up and down, doing this, painting stuff, doing whatnot, and 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 here we are. But but then I had to still battle to be here. And how do I? God is telling me, listen, I want you to love me, love me with all your mind. You already said, love all your heart. We talked about heart check. How am I going to love God if I have a broken heart? God wants that broken heart. So I'm going to give my broken heart because with my strength, I cannot love God. I don't know how to do things on my own. And again, Brother Carlos was telling us today a little bit about being parents and being kids. And we're consistently being reminded that we all got an inner child within us. And sometimes that inner child, is, it, it's, it, it needs some guidance because we, we, trust me, I never want to hurt you. But I know I hurt some people in this place. Like, I never mean, like, I don't mean to be, to be um, um, dismissive. And but maybe you're, like, telling me something. It's like, man, like, you're, like, I was telling you something, and I felt like you didn't really care about what I said. That was not my intention. Do you know what I'm saying? You never have the intention, but why do we hurt each other? It's because we don't know. We need to go, God, here's my heart. And then usually because my heart is broken, then usually my mind that this already has these wirings and how to have this prejudice or these past experiences, it reminds me about, oh, I, I can't do that. I can't go to church today. You know how long I haven't been to church? You want me to start again? No, no, no. I did this already. I'm not going to do this anymore. But I want to invite you to do this. Number one, we got to start setting our minds in Jesus. Let's go to that one. Let's go to the next Look, look at this, and this is, this is where the battle is for us. This is where the battle is for us. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 7. I mean, 8 through 9. It says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Resist. How do you resist? You got to be sober minded. We have to be people that don't have two hearts. We have to be people that our minds are set on the things of God because we have something that is, we have a, an enemy that is not happy that your mind is getting clearer and clearer. Oh man, you know that day when things are just looking different like, oh, what? So I wasn't supposed to go this way? So I've been trying to invest money the wrong way. I could have gotten paid better here. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Like what that day that just you feel the enlightenment happen on whatever topic in your life. And it's like, what happened to my mind? You felt you weren't sober minded. And I would be, let me go there right, right quick for, for a very quick second. People that intentionally and literally have said, I'm going to get sober. I'm not going to depend on alcohol or any other substances to be alive and to be operational, to move. And when they start seeing that freedom, my goodness, you can't go back. It's hard. The enemy's there. That's what we telling. Hey, resist him. You got to resist. How are we going to resist? Well, it's going to be that battle. Next thing. Let's go to the next. We have to understand that that's the 
what we're going to resist is with the mindset that we get. The mind has, as we think, then we start creating these mindsets. And sometimes they're culturally, right? Sometimes they're because of your last name, that there are certain things that are done this way in your home, and that's just the way we're all going to do it. Guess what? God has a better way. And God wants to confront our mindsets to give us the freedom that only comes through the mind of Christ. You can continue. We need to learn. In order for us to learn, we must unlearn to relearn. And this is the hard part. But the Carlos was telling us, and many of you know, we, we are in a transition or transitionary period. And it's hard when you're already used to something to be in a new space. When you were in a relationship and you're not there. When you move to a different city. When you move to a different job. Whatever it is, you always have to know that you want to learn. You want to be teachable. But in order to learn, we have to unlearn. And I have to go back to God. I have to be humble. And that's hard. God, teach me. Teach me. What does it mean to be in this season? I don't want the previous information to taint or divert the mindset, the previous mindset to get me to the place that I'm not, I don't want to be. Right? When you're single, you got a mindset and you got certain responsibilities. Single people in this place appreciate it. Because <laughs> it's good. There's going to be days that are going to feel lonely. <laughs> but sometimes then you are in a relationship and people still want to be in the single mindset. And it don't work that way. Or you're not married and now you still want to have that mindset of being married. And it's not like that. If a relationship is over, that's why our hearts need to go back to God. So he commended and now he could change the mindset. So how are we going to relearn? Well, let's go next. So let's see this. Our minds need to be transformed. Go to this verse, please. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Again, this is a verse that I learned very early in my walk with Jesus. I encourage you to do the same. Do not be conformed to this age. Another version says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to the pattern of the world. Do not be conformed to the mindset that you see around you. There are so many things against us. There's a lot of mindsets in this city. And you say, well, that's Jersey City. That's my family of origin. That is the way that we're supposed to be. That's the kind of church we are. You know, we're a small church. And whatever mindset you take, God is saying, be transformed. Metamorphosis. To be a change that doesn't, cannot go back. And that's why I believe today it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit transforms you and it's like a fire. <laughs> that once the fire touches something, you cannot put it back. You, because it, it, was, it was transformed in its essence, in its chemistry. And I know something. Once you taste Jesus for real, it's hard to go back. You could go on sinning again, but trust, trust you me. It's not going to taste good anymore. It's like, dad, bro. You feel this conviction. The Holy Spirit is there. It's like when you love, you know, you love. You know, like I've been saying this many times. Like I want to be faithful to my wife, not because I'm going to get in trouble with her, but because I love her. Does that make sense? Right? If you don't love, then that whole boundaries don't continue to be around. But when you love God, you want to be transformed. There are things, there are changes in our behavior. And this is what I'm saying. So you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and, and perfect. What is acceptable and perfect. So let's transform our minds. How do we transform our minds? By standing in Jesus. Can you go to the next one, please? It is the Bible that helps us reframe our minds. Brother, um, Brother Cruz, can you help me out? I have some stuff here I want to give you. And I'll also share it digitally for those of you that don't like paper. <laughs> but you can hold it for a second. Just hold it for a second. Because I want to invite you to think about this. The word of God is what's going to reframe your mind. Go, go to the next. Go to this verse. Look, look, look what the, the Bible says. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life. And peace. What are you setting your mind on? They said this in soccer when they're about to take a penalty, they're about to take a penalty that they hit <laughs> the ball, right? Like the whole, the whole thing. I, I, how many meters is it? How many feet is it? Just from not, you know, 
Come on, I'm, I'm counting on you guys. You have to come ready with soccer information. I'm looking. It's like, isn't it like 20 steps? There you go. Mexican, help me out, bro. You got it. <laughs> he is from Mexico. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, again, like, why? That's the leave. That was racist. Like, <laughs> Mexico is better than us guys in soccer. You know that. Come on. Don't take it out of context. Somebody's going to be like, yo, oh, it's a racist. No, it's we have the best of the brightest. We are. We got, literally, we got the best of the brightest. So, and that how close it is. <laughs> and how, 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 just right there, and so many people miss. Say that 85% of them miss because they're thinking about the place they shouldn't hit it. Instead of the place where they should hit it. And when you focus exactly on the stuff that you shouldn't be doing. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Guess what you're thinking? You're setting your mind in that which you don't want to do. And guess what? You wind up doing it again. So what are we setting our minds? Can we set our minds in the word of God? Because the word of God will reframe you. I don't know what's, if I haven't, there you go. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. This is a Bible verse. I continue to be reminded every day. It, it, it is a battle. I told you already, this is a battle. But God is in, inviting us to do this. Destroy, we destroy arguments. Please dissect this sometime in your house because how many arguments do you get on a daily? You can't go to that. You can't do that. I can't show up to church. I can't be around people that know God. There's people that get scared to see him in the streets sometimes, and I don't even mean to. I'm just going to the supermarket. I'm just going to on my own way. I'm just going and pick up my son at school, and then they see me. It's like, uh, uh, Pastor Lee. You know, like, because they have arguments in their minds. Because they have, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I've done this. And because I did that, I cannot be around people that are godly. I heard exactly the words verbatim. I feel bad being around people like you guys. Because you know what's the problem? We evaluate ourselves with that that we know about ourselves against that what I don't know about others. <laughs> it's not going to be fair. Because in your view, my marriage is the best one. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, my God. They never, they're always walking on clouds. There's no arguments ever. Then if you ask my wife, she's like, Tag, I don't even know how you guys listen to this guy. <laughs> so that's why I got to always destroy the arguments and every lofty opinion race. Wait, wait, go back, go back. Race against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. You got to take that thought captive to obey Christ. The thought will tell you it ain't worth it. The thought will do so many things. And you can share this right now. Please, if you want, just raise your hand. I could uh, share the, the um, <laughs> my, phone, my phone is there. But many times we say, we're unlovable, but God says, I am forever loved. When you say that you're sick, but God says that you are healed. Number three, you may say that you are weak, but God says that he makes you strong. In Psalms 18.32, God arms me with strength, and he makes my way perfect. You recognize that you're a sinner, number four, but God says you're forgiven. Number five says, you feel that you may be ad abandoned, but God says that you're adopted. Number six, I, you may say that you're alone, but God says that he's always with you. You may say that you're rejected, but God says that you are his. Isaiah chapter 43 says, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. You are mine. You may say that you have failed, but God says that you're victorious in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 57, but thank God, he gives us the victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. I say I am worthless, but God says Jesus died because I am worth it. These are just nine verses. Of about a bunch that you have to always bring it captive. Can you go back to that two, two, two slides back? Well, you have to bring those thoughts captive and say, you know what? I feel today I'm a failure. I feel today I wasn't supposed to do that. I sinned against God. I'm quitting everything. 
I'm quitting my marriage. This thing is too hard. I can't stand this woman. I can't stand this man. I can't stand my parents. I can't stand school. I can't stand. And quitting is always something you think about. Of something, especially when you feel pressure. You always try to go and apply for a new job when you feel that pressure in your current job. When things are happy, you're, not, you're okay because the thoughts are okay. But when those thoughts come against you, you need to bring it to obedience to God. The word of God is going to reframe your thoughts and your thinking. To love God with all our minds is for us to go and bring it back to him and say, God, this is the thought that I have. Acknowledge the thought. It's there. Don't give it a home, though. Filter it with the word of God. And here, this is what I, I, I want you to do. Because I have a lot way more. But God tells me, we got to be done. And I'm going to be done. So go to the very last one. Let's take action. Because I'm going to leave strength for next week. This is what I want you to do. Let's start renewing your mind by spending time in these statements. And I want to encourage you to memorize one verse. You don't need to memorize nine, just one. Pick the one that speaks the the loudest to you. Pick, pick the one that you feel like, man, you know, this week, I feel I'm just weak. This week, I just feel alone. This week, I just feel abandoned. Can I be honest with you? Man, we si- I signed up our church to, to, um, to a website that when people need help, they send us, they, they, they send us a, a person that's needing prayer. It's only been about four weeks, and we already have 54 people that have been matched because of our location. Every person that writes there is loneliness, depression, struggling with their self-esteem. Loneliness, depression. Some of it is because their parents and their children are, are just struggling with a lot of mental health situations. Others is because they're just went through a breakup. Just this morning, somebody wrote to us, and I see it when I wake up and I see this. Somebody wrote at 3.30 in the morning. You know if somebody writes at 3.30 in the morning is because something is really going on. I've been homeless for a whole month. I don't know where to go. I started walking with Jesus, but I'm homeless. I can even attend church. And right away, they're not right here. But I'm sending them information, Brooklyn churches, that right, we know, like, hey, try go here. Go here, where you at, right? And little by little, you're going to see some of those people stepping into this room because God is speaking to some of them. What I want to invite you to know is that the, this, this stuff that we're feeling, we're all feeling it. The first, the first doubt and the first lie that the enemy tells you is that you're the only one going through it. Listen, we want to be safe people and create safe spaces and create safe times. But I know it takes time for you to trust people. That's fine. All I'm saying is we also struggling. And this week for me, that sometimes I feel like I've been rejected, right? Like the job that was going to call you never called, right? So he said, he said that I'm not good enough. You got to be reminded, but then what God tells me, listen, do not fear. Come on, Isaiah 43, 1. Can we read that? I, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. You are mine. Can we get the, 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 the team back here, uh, the worship team? I feel, I feel God wants to speak to some people. Can you stand with me? Let me, let me, let me remind you again how we're going to reframe our mindsets for God. You fa- feel that you've been abandoned. And Samir, just be watchful. You have the camera right in back. He's so sorry. It's all right. We'll get, we'll get to that. But. You feel ad- abandoned, but God says you are adopted. God decided in advance to adopt you into his family by bringing you to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Can you close your eyes with me? And allow the word of God to renew your heart. Again, you may feel that you're unlovable. And sometimes that, that, that all connects, right? You feel alone, you feel abandoned, you feel weak. 
And I love Romans chapter 8, verse 38. It's the one verse I still don't get to this day. I still don't get it. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the God's love. Neither, neither death nor life. Neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Anybody can say amen. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Can you savor those words and just understand that you are loved? Checking out this podcast reminder, something that we have been spoken has been spoken in our churches that can we feel known and loved at the same time? Sometimes we feel if you know us, if you know me, you won't love me. And if you love me, please don't get to know me. Because if you get to know me, you may not love me. <laughs> And what I feel God is speaking to us again, it's like, listen, we want to be a place where you could be known and you could still be loved. You know why? Because I love you with God's love. I cannot love you with my love. My love, I, I'm sorry. I, I have a short circuit. I don't really, I cannot stand things. There's a lot of things I feel uncomfortable, but I'll tell you one thing. Nothing will separate you from God's love. And because God will never let you go and God will fight for you and God will be with you. You know what, man? I'm fighting for you for that. I'm fighting for that, that, that love that God has on you just to remind you that you're loved. I may not show you that love many times, but one thing I'll tell you, listen, God, God, God got you. His love, I got you. So today I want to invite you. Do you feel the need for prayer? Can you just lift up your hands right there where you are? I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you right there. So allow the Holy Spirit in this song just to allow, we, 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 you may feel a hand around you. We want to pray over you. We want to bless you. If you're home too, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to receive that, that heart, that prayer. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. Today, God wants to rewire your brain and rewire you to him. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, calm down. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you, Holy Spirit. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, everything that you have started, Lord, you will come, it will come to completion. The hopes and dreams, Lord, they were not, they were not, they were not done. They're still there. They're alive. And once again, Lord, I know, Father, that you will strengthen and give peace that surpasses all understanding, God. But there's renewal, there's renewal, there's renewal. I pray in the name of Jesus. You renew a Holy Spirit, Lord God, come and be alive, Lord, right now, Father. Be God real, Lord, in this life, Lord. Be real, Lord God, right now. For God knows the plans he has for you, and he will continue to fight for those purposes to become, to be accomplished in this time. And I pray, God, everything, everything that you have started, Lord, just do it, Lord God. With no fear, with no fear, with no fear, with no fear. You're not abandoned. God still got you. Every word that you heard, God still got it. It's not there. It's not dead. It's still alive. Speak to even dry bones and God will start bringing something new in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know, Lord. You know, you know what you've been called for. And I pray in the name of Jesus that every doubt will be taken away and God will renew you again in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do it once again. Do it once again, God. Do it once again in this family, God, because I know greater things, Lord, the way they even know, Father, you got for them. Greater things, God.